Welcome to Managing Keyboards, a module of the Wavelink eLearning training course on Velocity and specifically the Velocity console. Each time you want to move to the next slide, click anywhere on the slide to continue or click the forward arrow shown here. The Velocity console has built-in keyboards for all supported emulation types. It also has the ability to manage keyboards using the keyboard editor option. It is designed for creating custom keyboards that you can use on the Velocity client. Keyboards added or created using this application can then be bundled with projects and exported to devices for use in place of default device keyboards during a session with a host profile. In this module, we will give an overview of the keyboard editor functionality discuss creating and configuring keyboard templates, and then use those templates to create a custom keyboard. As we said, the Velocity Console has the ability to manage keyboards using the Keyboard Editor option. It is designed for creating custom keyboards that you can use on the Velocity client. Custom keyboards are created, edited, and exported as part of a project. Before you can create and edit individual keyboards, you must first create a project in which to contain your keyboards. Custom keyboards and templates are created and their behaviors and presentations are controlled within a project. A project can contain multiple keyboards. Through the Keyboard Editor tool, you can assign multiple values to keys and associate them with states such as unshifted, shifted, or long press. At the key level, Alphanumeric characters or hex codes are supported for special actions like function keys. At the keyboard level, orientation viewing modes, key styles, and templates are supported for increased control over keyboard use. Each keyboard consists of a template or a layout of keys with predefined labels, values, positions, and sizes. Custom keyboards created from a template inherit all the template's traits, including key layout and any pre-assigned key labels and values. Even after creating a custom keyboard, you can still edit the layout and size of the keys through the template editor. In addition to editing the layout of keys on a keyboard, the color of each key and the font size of their labels are customizable through the style editor. Keyboards are exported and imported as part of a project bundle. When exporting a project, the Velocity Console creates a .wldep file containing all scripts, images, and other resources needed to use keyboards during a session. All keyboards created within a project are included when deployed. You cannot select individual keyboards to deploy or export. Adding keyboards or creating custom keyboards is done using the keyboard editor. To get to the editor, you must initially launch the Velocity Console application. You're given the option of creating a new project or opening a current one, if any exists. If you need help with creating a project, please watch the eLearning module Velocity Console installation and overview. For this training, we will open an existing module. Click on the name of the existing module. The host profile screen appears by default. Click on the Keyboards menu option on the upper right quadrant of the screen. The Keyboard Editor appears. Creating and editing keyboards is done through the Keyboards menu option of the Velocity Console. This tool allows you to directly edit a keyboard within a project, create custom keys for use between multiple keyboards, edit individual key details and values, and import keyboards to another project. The keyboard editor is broken down into four sections or panels. The first is the editor panel. It directly edits a keyboard's individual keys to create your own labels, values, and styles. When a specific keyboard is selected from the keyboards panel, it displays here and can be edited directly. Any changes made to the keyboard from this panel are reflected across all other projects linked to that custom keyboard. Second is the Keys panel. Drag and drop keys with predefined labels, values, and styles from this panel onto the Editor panel. Or create your own custom keys for use across multiple keyboards. This panel contains all common alphanumeric keys in addition to symbols and some custom keys with special actions. 
third is the key detail panel. Set attributes of individual keys such as labels, values, and styles from this panel. The fourth and final is the keyboards panel. Import additional keyboards or edit other keyboards linked to the project from this panel. When managing keyboards, the Velocity console has built-in templates as well as the ability to create and save templates for further use. To create a template, go to the Keyboards panel on the lower right quadrant of the workspace. Click on the plus key, which is the Create New Template key. The Choose Template dialog appears. All previous built-in templates will be available for you, as well as any custom templates that were created previously. There are multiple templates for emulation types VT, 5250, and 3270. A QWERTY template is available, as well as a generic grid template. Select your template from the basic section, which holds all the default emulation keyboards, or from the custom section that holds all the custom-built keyboard templates. For this training, we will select the grid template to work with. This is just a template. Select Grid from the basic section. Click on Select. Provide a name for the template you will create. Click on Submit. The grid template is now active in the editor panel on the top left portion of the workspace. The top left of the workspace is the editor panel. This is where we will configure our template. Click on the Edit Template link on the upper right of the editor panel. The Edit Template dialog box appears. When working with the template, there are times where you will want to delete keys in the template to give you more space to build your keyboard, or you just do not need that many keys. Within the Edit Template applet, when you do not want a key, just double click on the key. The key will be removed. Keys can be moved around the Edit Template applet. Put your mouse over the light blue arrow on the top left corner of the key you want to move and right click on your mouse. You now have control of that key. Line the blue arrow up with the top left corner position of the quadrant where you want to move the key and let up on the mouse click. The key is now in the desired spot. It is possible to resize any key on a template. Place your mouse on the lower right corner of the key that you want to resize. You can drag from that corner to make it larger, wider, smaller, or thinner. The Edit Template applet has an Undo button. This will undo the last change you made in order. It keeps in memory all the changes since the last save was done. In this example, we will move the larger button from the bottom of the smaller keys to above the smaller keys. After looking at the template, we decided we liked it back where it was. All we have to do is click on the undo button. The change is reversed, so we do not have to remember exactly where the key was before. Please note, once you save your work with the Save or Save as New Template buttons, you cannot undo your work with the undo button. When we first created the template, we gave it a name. If we want to save the work of this existing template, we click on the Save button. Since we added this from the Keyboards panel, the saved keyboard is placed in the Keyboards panel with no keys applied. The template is stored in the Custom template and can be used later. Since we did not actually apply any keys to the template, it is not going to be of much use to us. Later in the module, we will discuss how to add keys to a template to make a functional keyboard. If we make some changes to an existing template and we want to save those changes as a new template, we can do that using the Save as New Template button. You will be asked to provide a new name for the template. Enter a new name such as Clean Numbers shown here and then click on Submit. The template will be stored under the custom section of the template storage list. Now that we have templates and custom templates, we can go about creating custom keyboards to add to our project. Please note, if you add one or more keyboards to a project, those keyboards will be the only ones available. You will lose all default keyboards for your chosen emulation type. To add a keyboard, click the plus key for a new keyboard from the Keyboards panel in the lower right corner of the Keyboards workspace. 
Choose a template to use as the pattern for your keyboard. In this example, we will choose Acme Numbers. This was a template we created earlier. Once the selection is highlighted, click on Select. Now we must name the keyboard. For this example, the name is Numbers and Function. The keyboard I will build will contain numbers and function keys, so I thought it a fitting name. Once your name is chosen, click on Submit. The template is ready for keys to be placed where needed to turn the template into a keyboard. When placing keys onto a keyboard, you want to be cognizant of the keyboard state. These states are default, which is not shifted, or there was no long press. There's the shift state, which is where the keyboard is in its shifted state. There is the long press default, which is a long press of a key when the keyboard is in the default state. And there's the long press shift, which is a long press of a key when the keyboard is in a shifted state. We will use the default state of the keyboard for our numbers 0 through 9 and the enter key. So make sure the default key state is selected. From the lower panel of keys, drag and drop starting from the number 1 and place it where you want it on the keyboard. Then do the same for number 2, number 3, and continue until you have placed all the numbers with the zero at the end. On the last big key at the bottom, place the enter key. We will now fill the keys in the shift state. Make sure the shifted key state is selected. From the lower panel of keys, drag and drop the function keys in any order you desire until you fill all the smaller keys. Place the escape key on the last big button at the bottom. Even though the project has a specific emulation type configured, it is still important to change some of the settings before the keyboard is finished. Go to the settings option shown here. First, you must select the emulation type for the keyboard. We select VT. Next, you can choose if it will work in portrait mode, landscape mode, or both. In my project, I select both. When that is all finished, click on Save, and the keyboard is displayed in the Keyboards panel on the lower right of the workspace. You can create your keyboards in any order for the project, but when finished, you want to make sure you set up which keyboard comes up by default. It is easy to reorder the keyboards on the keyboard's workspace. From the Edit menu in the top left corner, select Reorder Keyboards. The list of available keyboards for the project appears. With your mouse, just drag and drop the keyboards until they are in the order you want them. The predictive algorithm tries to select the right keyboard for the screen when possible, but when it is not sure, it will go with the default keyboard you have selected, and that will be the top keyboard, and then the swipe order will follow your list. Click Save to keep the new reorder. Thank you for listening to the Managing Keyboards presentation a module of the Wavelink eLearning training course on Velocity and specifically the Velocity console. You are now ready to move on to the next module. Wavelink, a wholly owned subsidiary of the Landis Corporation, has offices around the world so there will always be a convenient office near you. If you would like any more information, please contact your Wavelink sales representative or email us at the address sales at wavelink.com.